Encanto is a box office success, a streaming hit, and a musical phenomenon, and it's full of hidden details and easter eggs, including some that give secret information about the movie you may have missed. These are the first lines of the movie, Abres los ojos, open your eyes. Two things are happening here. First, the immediate translation from Spanish to English establishes this as a Hispanic story. This is important since the film takes place in Colombia and will rely heavily on the country's history and culture. Second, that theme of open your eyes will be important throughout. Abuela says it to a young Mirabel. Next up is something plenty of people missed, even though they show up everywhere in the movie. It's butterflies. Butterflies on the candle. Butterflies in the architecture of the magical casita. A butterfly is a sign for hope in Bruno's vision. And yellow butterflies swarming Abuela and Mirabel when they've come to understand each other at the movie's end. Yellow butterflies seem to represent a harmonious magic in Encanto, but that's not entirely the movie's own invention. The Colombian author Gabriel Garcia Marquez used yellow butterflies as a recurring motif in a number of his short stories and novels, most notably in 100 Years of Solitude, where one character is constantly trailed by them. Marquez was known for incorporating magical realist elements in all of his works, but the yellow butterflies were his most iconic. So much so that when he passed away in 2014, his memorial service ended with the flurry of paper yellow butterflies being released. Encanto's use of magic butterflies is a tip of the cap to Marquez's legacy and impact. But everyone in the Madrigal family has a special gift, including some that you might have missed, since they're a little more hidden than the others. Dolores, as you know, has super hearing. Look closely and you'll see that it's an ability that comes with a price. From the wincing at loud noises, to covering her ears, to clapping with her fingertips. Dolores doesn't complain, but her body language says just as much as the song sung by Mirabel's sisters Isabel and Luisa. It's one of the many ways Encanto addresses the silent pressure the Madrigals feel to maintain appearances. And it's not just the magical Madrigals feeling the pressure. Mirabel's father, Augustine, and Uncle Felix married into the family, hence why they have no magical powers. But Augustine still feels pressure to fit in. So much so, he even tries to perform in the We Don't Talk About Bruno number, despite being slightly out of sync with everyone else and not singing. We're guessing Felix doesn't feel as much pressure, because he already got a verse in the song. But Augustine does have something else very special about him. Here's a hint, take a closer look at his outfit. Did you notice anything special about it? It's actually full of hidden details that only the sharpest viewers will catch. He wears a flower that represents Isabella's flowery dress, one of his socks has the same pattern as Luisa's dress, and the other has the same style as the embroidery on Mirabel's dress. That's right, he dresses to match not just one but all three of his daughters at once. It looks like his special gift is that he can support all of his daughters at once through his outfit. How's that for multitasking? But he isn't the only one with details hidden in their clothes. Look closely at each of the Madrigal family members' clothes and you'll notice hidden details that fit perfectly with their characters. Isabella's is the easiest to spot, whose flower-covered dress perfectly matches her gift of being able to conjure all sorts of beautiful plants. Luisa's dress also has a secret symbol, though it's a bit harder to make out. Can you tell what those symbols are, though? It's right! They're dumbbells that go with her incredible strength. Julieta's dress is covered in images of plants and herbs that go with her magical ability to heal with food. Camilo, being a shapeshifter, has a poncho with chameleons on it, while Bruno's poncho has an hourglass that fits with his ability to see the future. Dolores' super healing is represented by sound waves on her dress, and Peppa's dress has raindrops, lightning bolts, and other weather symbols which fit with her ability to control the weather through her emotions. Even Abuela's dress has a butterfly pattern, which as we've already mentioned represents the magic in the world of Encanto. And what about Mirabel? She's a talented seamstress, so it only makes sense that she has the most elaborate dress of them all, containing references to her entire family, including the Madrigal family candle, a hint that her gift involves the entire family. Next up is a secret detail that you have to be an expert to figure out. A Colombian music expert, that is. But if you figure it out, it'll give you some hidden information about the movie. When Abuela calls for music and Augustine starts to play the piano, it's actually a real song by a famous Colombian artist, Joe Arroyo, called In Barranquilla Mi Quedo. This also provides us with a clue as to when the movie's supposed to take place, since that song was recorded in 1988, which means it must be set sometime after that. Another easy-to-miss detail? The men who are playing a game that seems to involve miniature explosions are actually participating in a real-life activity. In Colombia, there's a game called Tijo, and it involves throwing objects at small targets made of gunpowder that explode when they're hit. And there's yet another hidden reference next. The beautiful, brightly colored water is actually a real place. It's inspired by the Caño Cristales River in Colombia, which is also known as the River of Five Colors, or the Liquid Rainbow, and its brightest colors are caused by plants that grow on the riverbed. 
This next detail has a reference so hidden, it took someone who worked on the movie to reveal it. According to Jared Bush, Encanto's co-director and co-screenwriter, Bruno's empty sand-filled tower is partially inspired by the Salt Cathedral in Zipaquira, Colombia. The cathedral is situated 600 feet underground, within the caverns of a former salt mine. First established in 1953, the current Salt Cathedral was established in 1990, featuring relics from the original as well as new statues and stations, all made out of salt. The eerie neon amid the earth tones were one inspiration for Bruno's tower, and obviously the winding tunnels leading to the chapel also inspired one of the most iconic moments from We Don't Talk About Bruno. Speaking of the movie's number one song, there's hidden details that only the sharpest-eyed viewers caught. Look closely in the background and you'll see Bruno dancing upstairs, both as himself and judging by the silhouette as his alter ego, Hernando. And look closely in the background when Mirabel meets Bruno for the first time, and you'll spot another Disney Easter egg and a reference to a fan-favorite movie. Did you spot what it is? There's a flower growing out of a boot, just like the one seen in WALL-E. And there are more references that are even more hidden. A very hidden nod to Colombia comes with Camilo's name. Well, not a nod to the whole country, but to a specific person there. Camilo's name was inspired by a tour guide from Colombia named Camilo Garcia, who guided the Disney staff as they researched the country. Of course, his name fits perfectly because there's also a reference to chameleons, which goes along with his shape-shifting ability. His eyes even bug out like a chameleon at one point. Antonio's name is also extremely fitting. He's named after St. Anthony of Padua, who just so happens to be the patron saint of domestic animals in Colombia, a natural fit for when your magical gift is the ability to communicate with animals. The family name is also quite important, too. A madrigal is actually a type of song that's written for several voices singing together and often over the top of each other, and reflects the film's themes of a family where each member has their own unique gifts and voices. You definitely miss this next reference if you're not a fluent Spanish speaker. When Agustin finds out Mirabel is part of Bruno's vision of the destruction of the house, he's understandably upset. Even more so when he realizes Dolores has naturally heard everything. His response? Miércoles. Spanish speakers will know that miércoles is the word for Wednesday, and also miércoles is a common euphemism for mierda, the Spanish word for, uh, waste, much like how English speakers might say fudge. It's one word, a brief moment, but it lends authenticity to the characters and the setting, and it's funny. This next Easter egg is all about how Bruno keeps himself entertained, but it was so obscure that it was definitely missed by almost everyone. Bruno tells Mirabel that he gets free entertainment, including sports. Here's the funny thing about this sport. The uniforms perfectly match the teams from Colombia and West Germany at the 1990 FIFA World Cup. It was Colombia's first time at the World Cup since 1962, and that particular matchup resulted in a 1-1 tie, allowing both nations to advance to the second stage of the competition, beginning with the round of 16. Unfortunately, that's when Colombia wound up losing to Cameroon, and West Germany advanced all the way to win. As for another show, he tries telenovelas, explaining that in this one, their love could never be because she's his aunt. She has amnesia, she can't remember she's his aunt, and it's a very forbidden kind of love. It might be another reference to 100 Years of Solitude, which features more than one Hot for Auntie subplot. Ready for more super hidden details? The centerpiece tune of the movie comes around the end. Dos Orrietas, nominated for the Best Original Song Oscar. The Spanish language song performed by Sebastian Yatra plays over Abuela's memories of meeting Abuelo, falling in love, starting a family, and the circumstances that led to them leaving their home, his death, and the origins of Encanto, a story Abuela obviously carries with her daily. At the very beginning, she has a verse in the family Madrigals that sets up the Dos Orguetas melody. At the very beginning, she has a verse in the family Madrigals that sets up the Dos Orguetas melody when she sings that they swear to always help those around us and earn the miracle that somehow found us. It also ties into the reference to Gabriel Garcia Marquez's butterflies. Dos Orrietas is Spanish for two caterpillars, and the song references chrysalises and butterflies as symbols for change and growth. And here's a lovely bit of trivia. Disney Animation Studios revealed that the first meeting of Abuela and Abuelo was animated by real-life husband and wife animators Jackie Kohler and Andrew Ford. And that's not where the Disney references end. In the song All of You, Bruno sings Let it in, let it out, let it rain, let it snow, let it go. It's not just a coincidence, it is a reference to the Frozen song. That film's composers, Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez, are even credited at the end, since if you listen closely, you'll hear the piano from Let It Go during Bruno's line, invoking that film's billboard charting song Worked. Songs from the Encanto soundtrack became the first Disney tune since Frozen to chart on the Billboard Top 100. 
They even surpassed the accomplishment with We Don't Talk About Bruno being the first since Aladdin's A Whole New World to take the number one spot, and the only Disney song to do so for multiple weeks. Now let's put something to rest, namely Mirabel's lack of magic, and the source of conflict between her and Abuela. But the details we've seen throughout hint at what Mirabel's true power is. For one thing, she's the only member of the family besides Abuela who genuinely converses with Casita, to the point where she even understands Casita's language. No one else demonstrates this, even Abuela mostly orders Casita about. Mirabel has a special connection to the house, which perhaps explains why she, supposedly ungifted, has visions of its destruction. And obviously, it's no coincidence that her green glasses, which help her see such visions, are color-coded similarly to Uncle Bruno's green eyes when he has visions. Another hint that whatever power she has is more subtly executed. Also, consider the doors. When each Madrigal child receives their gift, Casita grants them a special door. Mirabel does not receive one as a child, and everyone is disappointed. However, at the end of the movie, after the community comes together to rebuild Casita, it's her touch that brings it back to life. Let's also look back at that first shot, which opens with a young Mirabel. Yup, it's the yellow butterflies again, embroidered on her shirt, and identical to the ones on the candle, which powers the enchantment. A hint about her power that was there from the very beginning. All details that back up what is never outright stated. Mirabel's gift is being the magic, the keeper of the flame, the guardian of the casita, the next abuela. I hope you liked the video and learned something new about Encanto. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.